This is Clark the Knife, and this is the Benchmade Griptilian. A little bit of a blast from the past here. This is a classic Benchmade model, particularly this version here, which comes in the 20CV right there, and these factory G10 handles. This is not a knife that you can get anymore, but this is really a review talking about how well does the Griptilian design hold up in 2024. And I believe that Benchmade has fully discontinued the Griptilian by this point. There were a couple straggler models that were still being sold through last year, and it was still in the custom shop through 2022, I believe. Um, but I believe the Griptilian is fully discontinued. So you're only going to see these on the secondary market, but you will see plenty of them on the secondary market. So let's talk about how well this classic Benchmade model holds up. I go through my reviews in three sections, starting with specs, then look at the knife tip to tail, then we score everything on a 1 to 10 scale. Let's get into it. So, your Benchmade Griptilian, like most modern Benchmades, as was corrected in um, one of my, um, in the comments of one of my videos, as with most modern Benchmades, is made in the USA. The price on these when they were last available was $175. Length is 3.45 inches on that blade, 120 thousandths on the blade stock, which is relatively thick for Benchmade, but is not that thick by knife industry standards. This one again is 20 CV, though you could get Griptilians regularly. Most were in S30V. You could also get them in S90V, M4, M390, there's one other steel floating out there that I can't remember, but you could get it in a bunch of different steels. And then there was gold class crap. 8.07 ounces or 8.07 inches overall for the length. 4.17 ounces. And like most Benchmade Axis Lock knives, this is on phosphor bronze washers. A few quick size comparisons. There it is against your TRM Atom. So about the same length overall as the Atom. But as you can see... Thicker in the blade and way like incomparably chunkier in the handle. Compare it to another common bench mage or bug out, and you can see the Griptilian dwarfs the bug out. And again, when you go onto this axis, you can see even more so it's just a significantly chunkier and more sort of heavy duty knife than the bug out. Let's compare it to your paramilitary 2. You see about the same length overall as the PM2. When we go on this axis again, you see the blade sock is a little thinner than the PM2. Handle thickness is fatter than the PM2 at its fattest, thinner than the PM2 at its thinnest because these are fully contoured G10 handles. It's also a little bit heavier than the PM2, which you might expect for all that G10. Compare it quickly to a Hinderer. You can see about the same size as your standard XM18. And then one more Benchmade comparison. There it is next to your 940. Similar in length, but much larger. And then I guess one, two last ones quick. There it is next to your TRM Neutron, as you might expect, much larger. And then next to your Spyderco Delica, absolutely dwarfs the Delica. So, this is a pretty big knife. This, again, is the full-sized Griptilian. Um, very, very similar in design to the Ritter Hogue or the RSK, um, as I reviewed in one of my earliest reviews. And that is because they were essentially designed by the same person. This is the old, this is basically Benchmade's continuation of the same general design that led to the Hogue RSK. This version here has the Griptilian's typical drop point blade here. Again, 120 thousandths on the stock. Keeps that thickness most of the way out toward the tip, your full thickness all the way out to about here. Still a pretty robust tip when you get all the way out there um, because you just don't have much space where it does taper. And then a relatively low saber grind here where you've only got about half the height of this blade that it is dropping. And so even though this drop point variation 
even though it is a relatively thin blade stock, as you might expect, this is not a slicing machine. Now, it is a pretty aggressive flat grind. If you look at the plunge there, you can kind of see it does taper pretty quickly. So Benchmade went pretty sharp with their flat grind here, and you can kind of see it's not fat behind the edge, but it's also not thin behind the edge. The drop point here is a bit different from typical drop points in ways that are mostly positive from a utilitarian perspective. Rather than kind of having a big flat and then a curve, it's actually a gradual curve all the way from tip to tail, or from, from the tip to the tail of the blade, and that tip is a little bit higher than your pivot here. That makes it feel a little stabby, and this is a very easy knife to pierce things into, and this tip feels very accessible for drag cuts, for pull cuts, utility cuts, for piercing into boxes, things like that. Very easy to access and use this tip. And then because you've got a belly that basically is the entire length of the blade, it's a very nice, easy blade to either roll on sort of table cuts like that. You know, it very naturally rolls as you drag it across things. Um, it also very nicely glides through cardboard, glides through, you know, your extended cuts into drywall or plant material or whatever you're cutting. It's very easy to keep this knife in the cut, drag that whole belly through the cut. And because you've got that high tip, it's also very easy to enter into cuts, to get this blade around things, to get it between things because of how narrow it is here. And because you've got a decently robust tip, you can also, frankly, be a little stabby, be a little aggressive with that tip, and it'll hold up to it. It is a blade that is designed kind of like the 940 in the sense that it is a blade that is meant to do a lot of things decently. It is not super slicey. It is not super, super thin behind the edge. It is more designed to be kind of robust. And it is. That said, especially when you sharpen it properly, it is more than slicey enough. In fact, this is a knife that I've handed to a lot of non-knife people and they've, they've regularly commented, wow, this thing feels pretty sharp. This thing feels pretty slicey. So it is more than slicey enough for most of your sort of daily tasks and frankly for most of your like around the job site, around the house tasks, things like that, um, without being designed to be a supreme slicer. It's more of a robust knife that can slice. Um, and frankly, I'm okay with 20 CV as the blade choice for that. The handle is where the Griptilian gets its name from. You know, it's meant to be super grippy. This G10 version is smooth milled here with sort of the Griptilian's kind of signature texture milled into this spot right here. It does give you a little bit of grip, but honestly, most of the grip on this handle is just from the overall shape. You've got a very big sort of front flare here with a big finger groove, big finger index right there. There is a little bit of jimping here, a little bit of jimping here. It's more for indexing, so sort of your finger knows where it is. Same for this jimping over the, um, over the top of the blade spine here. Even if you push down on it, it doesn't give you that much traction, but it does help you, you know, when you're not looking at the knife, feel exactly where you are. How close are you to this edge? You can feel that there. How close are you to this edge? You can feel sort of the transition of the jimping, or you can feel if there isn't any jimping, things like that. It just helps make this knife more intuitive to use. This big front finger index here, and the way that this knife pinches right there, feels very nice and secure for your thumb mounted here and your front finger there. These two fingers do have a nice secure grip on the knife. And even though it's a heavily contoured handle, you've got a big flat here, you've got a big flat here, so it doesn't want to roll quite as much as some heavily contoured handles do. And it is a, let me, let me fold it up here, a fairly heavy contour. When you really look at all the way from this end to that end, there's a pretty big curve. Actually, this end shows it better. You can see there's a pretty big contour on this G10. Oops, knives down. Um, and then with the rest of, with this big swell here, I mean, this whole big chunky belly, this big fat section here, because it just really fattens up right there, especially with that clip, this thing fills your entire palm as you use it. Now, 
there's a good side and a bad side to that. The good side, and this is why a lot of people have liked the Griptalian, it's been sort of people's first knife, first good knife for a very long time. In this particular grip, when you're not pushing it too hard, it feels like holding a broom, a big broomstick with a little bit of curve to keep your to keep your hand in place, something like that. This feels comfortable in the hand. Everything is very nicely rounded. You don't get that much grip from this. Again, it is the overall shape of the handle that's doing a lot of the work. What you do start to feel when you start to push the grip tilly in harder, there are no, this is all smooth here. This jimping is not doing a damn thing. This is all smooth back here. There's nothing really telling these three fingers where to go. And honestly, there's not even that much that is keeping the back of this knife in your hand all that much. And when you're gripping the knife like this, you know, putting your middle finger there, grabbing the blade, fine. Nice to control the blade. Again, very easy, simple blade design, very intuitive to use. But whether you're gripping it like this or gripping it like this, as you start to push this knife harder, this knife, this whole handle is comfortable in the hand, but it's not locking your hand in in any way, shape, or form. And you are very much holding on to this rounded object and doing what you can to keep it secure in your hand. As you push this knife harder, as you start to use it in more abrasive materials, as you start to use it in stiffer materials, things like that, you will become aware that you really do have to hold on to this knife. To, for it to feel secure. It is not holding on to you. If you compare it to something like a PM2, these more aggressive curves, whether you're up in that choil or whether you've got you know, this, this bigger, this sort of notch here for your back fingers and the bigger flats on the top and bottom, as you push a PM2 harder, it feels like the knife sort of grips you back. You don't feel quite as much like your hands have to work hold on to this knife and the pm2 isn't even exceptional in that regard but it's a whole lot better than the griptilian this big sort of just big bulbous chunk always feels comfortable in your hand but doesn't always feel secure in the hand that's been my experience with it especially as i use it harder now the way they've done this g10 handle is very nice You've got black hardware here. It's typical Benchmade hardware, which could be nicer, but it's not bad. The milling is very nicely done. They get a very nice smooth finish on the G10 up here. The diamond pattern is very nicely done. The way it blends naturally into the rest of the handle looks very pretty. The clip can be swapped to either side, which is nice. Leaves a bit of an ugly mark there. But, you know, it's to make it ambidextrous because this, you know, an axis lock is fully ambidextrous. So this knife is fully ambidextrous because you can swip, swap that clip. I'll take that little, you know, aesthetic smear there to make it so that lefties have the same experience. The way that they use G10 that is layered, that has this gray on top and then the blue underneath and then paired it with these blue standoffs is a really cool detail. It is just a very cool pop of color every time you look at this and you see that very bright blue staring at you. It's nice. It's cool. It's a nice design detail. It makes it feel more premium. Um, and then when you look at the internals here, you've got your typical axis lock stuff, typical axis lock sort of um, bar here. Very nice um, little sort of concentric milled circles there, easy to grip. As with most Benchmades, especially from this era, you really do have to grip both sides to get it to release. If you try to do it with one side, it'll release. But if you do that too much, you know, with just one side, you will find the stability of this lock starting to walk out a bit over time. You've got your big steel liners there. You know, going all the way out to, yeah, like here-ish. Um, just very, very large steel liners, very large chunks of G10. That's part of why this knife ends up being so heavy is because it's just a big handle. There's just a lot of material here, which also means that the knife feels handle heavy, which is part of also why... It can feel a little exhausting as you push into more heavy-duty chores. For knives that you push heavier, it's like the same reason that 
it's probably not the exact same reason, but similar to the reason that meat cleavers are so big and heavy, because when you want to push a blade hard, you want to feel that weight in the blade. Some to, often that can feel easier to control. When the weight is more in the handle, like it is here, it can sometimes feel like you are holding on to and you're secure on the part that isn't feeling the resistance. And so as that blade gets pushed around, wiggles around, things like that, you can feel in a little bit less control. I get that experience with the Griptilian, and it's another reason that it just doesn't feel the most secure in the hand. Again, comfortable, but not secure. Action on this G10 Griptilian is notably better than the action on the FRN Griptilians, and that's largely because this is a much stiffer frame than the FRN Griptilians you might be used to. Um, rolls out nicely, nice and smooth, free dropping, as you would expect from a good axis lock. The Benchmade Thumb Stud is not pretty. It's not ugly, but it's not pretty. It's really just, you know, basically bar stock with some stuff milled um, with, you know, an access point for a Torx wrench and some concentric circles milled on top, but it grips your thumb very nicely. It's nicely and naturally placed. You can get to it. It's exactly where your thumb wants to be and a nice little flick and it'll flick right out. Frankly, it is this was made a few years back in an era where a lot of Benchmades were a little bit more sketchy in terms of their action, or at least more inconsistent. And I've owned multiple of these G10 Griptilians, and they have consistently been more consistent in their action and in how stable this axis lock feels than your FRN Griptilians, or frankly, than even most Benchmade knives in general at the time. Now, there is the very slightest hint of play, side to side play, um, less than most axis locks, but still if you're coming from something that is rock solid, like a good frame lock or liner lock or stuff like that, there is play here that generally would not be evident in those. So that's kind of the Griptilian, what it has to offer. Again, it's a big chunky knife, which brings us to our scores. Again, 10 scores, five related to the fun factor, five related to the function. Let's start with fun factor. Blade design, I'm gonna call it B minus. Maybe this should be a B, but the fact is it's, it, it's pleasant, it's attractive to look at. Um, it's just kind of there. All your grinds, all your finishes are fine. But there's nothing. Um, but there's nothing particularly compelling about it. Again, I do like the way that they did this, and they made more of a gradual belly the whole way. And I do like that this is very much designed as a blade grind that does a little bit of everything that is meant to be utilitarian, meant to be robust. Um, again, the stabbiness is very nice. Frankly, I'm going to change this to a B when I get back to the um, when I get back here. But it's just. It's fine. Um, there's nothing remarkable about this grind in either its design or its execution. Adding the swedge here is a nice little visual interest. It's a, it's a fine drop point. I, again, little things I do like, but not enough to make it sort of unusual. Um, the handle design here, I am going to keep as a B minus. This is a handle design that feels dated. Very simple lines. Um, throughout. Again, the milling is nice. The contouring on the G10 is very nice. But the fact is, on, on one hand, there's nothing about this handle that does lock your hand in. And for a knife that is meant to occasionally be used a little bit harder, like the full-size Griptilian is, that does feel like a drawback functionally. But even aesthetically, it just it looks a little simple and almost a little like dorky and bulbous in a way that isn't really cool, that just looks, I don't know, like fat and not in an attractive way. And then especially you turn on its side and this handle is huge. I mean, this handle, especially for, you know, a blade that is robust, but not a hard to use blade, this handle looks and feels big and chunky and fat and massive and not in a good way. 
And you're aware of that when you're carrying it, you're aware of that when you're using it, when you're holding it in your hand, you're aware of it even when you're looking at it on the table. And it does feel like it sort of goes back to a time where knives more often were just big in the hand or chunky in the hand or fat in the hand, and that was used to make up for ergonomic lines that were a little bit less well-defined or to, you know, even even just visually, um, that a knife handle looking interesting, looking cool wasn't as much of a priority. It just feels basic and boring in 2024. And frankly, if a new knife came out with this exact same handle design, you would expect it from like a like a cricket or, or you know some sort of lower end company a very simple handle design like this i'm going to call it a b minus because i do like the little things they did with like the little flare of that uh, pop of blue um, the milling is very nicely done but it does feel basic and boring the action is a b verging on a b minus um, because of that little bit of play this is an older Benchmade that feels like a modern Benchmade. You do get that nice free dropping action. You got very nicely placed thumb studs. It flicks out nicely. It's satisfying. It does have that little bit of play. You're never gonna be able to totally eliminate that in my experience, um, which does hurt it a little bit, but you do get that fun free dropping axis lock action. As long as you're okay with a little bit of a rubbery detent, not that sort of crisp detent that you get with an actual detent ball. It's a B like most modern access locks. Fit and finish, I'm going to call a B minus, and this mostly comes down to the detail. It is getting dinged a little bit for the fact that this is a action that you don't get any play out of, meaning that you can't get rid of the play, and that is, when you sort of break it down, a fit and finish issue. It's just the tightness of everything in this access lock cage, and everything that holds the blade relative to the frame is just not at that level of tightness that you get even from something like the Ritter Hogue, the Hogue RSK, which doesn't tend to have blade play unless you get a lemon there. The hardware is fine, but it looks and feel little, feels a little dated. The milling here is nice. It's very nicely done, but it's not super tight. Like the fit and finish, there's, you know, there's just little gaps between the metal pieces and the G10 handles there. You know, when you look at that, everything, it was operating at a very good level of fit and finish from a few years ago. There's nothing bad, but it's not tight the way that you get from a lot of really good knives these days. Same thing with the blade. These grinds are pretty, they're nice, they're fine, but there's nothing impressive about the grind here. There's nothing impressive about the jimping here. It is good fit and finish without being impressive in any way, shape, or form. And in a couple of ways, like especially that hardware, feeling like a little bit of a left down. And the cool factor is a B minus, and frankly, the only reason it's even that high is because the Griptilian does have a lot of history. This is a knife that a lot of people have loved for a very long time, especially people that aren't knife people. The Griptilian is a knife that is that has sold hundreds of thousands of knives, I'm sure, over the years. Um, and it's just, it's a knife that a lot, lot, lot of people have had experience with. And a lot of people, frankly, have a bit of nostalgia for. It's a seminal design. And if I just look at this knife on its own terms, Honestly, this is probably like a C plus, maybe even a C in cool factor. It's just sort of like I was saying about the handle. It's just a kind of boring, basic design. All the lines are just a little dorky, just a little chubby, just a little uninteresting. But it's still a Griptilian. And the Griptilian has still been a very important knife in knife history and in the evolution of the knife community and in the evolution of, you know, what knives are and how people think about knives. And I do have to give it a bit of credit for that. I also have to give it credit that a lot of things that make it look dorky now weren't necessarily true back when this knife was designed, especially when this 20C version first came out, which was a number of years ago. So I'm gonna give it a B minus because we're talking about today, but I do give it some credit for those nostalgic factors. So B minus for fun factor, it's just a little bit boring across the board. There's nothing 
like derivative about it. There's nothing offensive about it. Um, and there's no part of it that is poorly designed, but it definitely does feel dated, especially when you start to look at more of the details. Which brings over to function. Cutting performance on this is a B. As I said when I was talking about the blade, 120,000 is a nice stock to start from for a tough but still slicey knife. But the fact is the way they chose to grind this, they prioritized that overall robustness and that versatility over pure slicing performance. I think that was frankly the right decision, but it does mean that the slicing performance of this is just fine. It is indeed fine. If this is going to be good enough for any task that you need realistically. I have never encountered something where this knife felt too fat to cut it or felt like it couldn't get the job done, but it certainly did not slice as well as a lot of my other more slicing centric knives be. The benefit is that this is a solid B plus in utility. And again, it comes down to the counter argument for this blade, the positive argument for this blade, which is that this is a functionally well-designed drop point between that continuous belly, between the thickness out toward the tip. Um, it's just the sort of knife that you can beat up and beat the snot out of and get dirty. And you know, this blade design can do just about everything. As you can see, I haven't used this one all that hard. I've used it more than it looks, um, but I haven't used it all that hard. And frankly, I didn't have to use this one this much because I probably owned eight Griptilians in my time collecting knives. Like this is far from my first rodeo with the Benchmade Griptilian. But the fact is the blade in particular is a very good, true do everything blade. If you took this blade and put it on a more interesting handle, this could be, and frankly, you'd need to redesign the knife pretty fundamentally because you can say, okay, then get some AWT scales for it and things like that. It doesn't really fix the problem. It still feels big and chunky. But if you took a blade sort of like this and sort of redesigned the Griptilian around that, this blade is a really good, versatile blade that you can take out wherever you want to. It'll pierce whatever you need to. It'll do whatever sort of utility cuts you need. It'll slice through cardboard. It'll do your long cuts. It'll do your delicate cuts. It'll do everything. This is a really, really good one and done blade design that you can be confident when you're carrying a Griptilian, there will be no task that it is unable to do. Now the problem with the utility, I am dinging it a little bit for one, the fact that, as I mentioned, this handle, as you start to push into those heavier duty tasks, and as I sort of tend to, I'm talking a little bit about the feel here, as you start to push into those heavier duty tasks, this handle will start to let you down. And the fact that there just aren't that many severe ergonomic lines means that it is going to, you're gonna to have to grip the knife harder than you'd want to as you start to push it harder. And I did find the harder I used this knife, the less that I liked it. Um, especially as stuff started to get more abrasive, more resistive, stiffer, things like that. This handle just wasn't staying in my hand quite as much as I wanted to, even though it was comfortable to hold in lighter grips. So it gets a B plus because it can do a lot of things very well and the blade is great. I just don't think the handle is quite as versatile in the sense that it feels, the handle feels very big for small tasks when you're just pulling it out to, you know, open an Amazon package or something like that. This handle, it feels like a lot of knife. It feels big and chunky and frankly, it feels handle heavy, which gives you less control over the blade. On top of that, it still doesn't serve you well on those really heavy duty tasks like something like a Mannix would. So this is really sort of an A minus or even an A blade from the utility perspective that is held back by a handle that frankly is like a C plus from a utility perspective. And that's why I'm giving it a B minus for feel here. Um, I'm doing a little bit better than that C plus because it is a very comfortable handle and a lot of people really like that. Um, a handle that is this thick, this rounded, this hand filling. I mean, it literally fills up your whole hand. For people that really do want a comfortable feeling handle, it's great. It's nicely rounded everywhere. There's no hot spots or anything like that. But I do find that 
those lines which really are in the end pretty neutral and are asking the sheer chunkiness of this handle to do all the ergonomic work, they do end up meaning that it just doesn't feel as good in the hand as I want to, especially when you're on those two extremes. Those light duty tasks, it feels like a lot of knife to lug around and a lot of knife to handle. And those heavy duty tasks, you're gonna wish that you had something with stronger ergonomic lines. So B minus in feel, Carry is frankly a C minus. I do not do not like carrying the grip tillium whatsoever. And it's a perfect example of how I sort of prioritize size of the knife in carry over weight. So if you look at these two knives, the hinderer here is very slightly the heavier knife of the two. And these are both three and a half inch knives, roughly speaking. You know, if you flip this out, about the same blade length. Um, thicker blade sock on the hinderer, um, though not by that much. But then if you look at the handles here, and especially you compare them at their thickest point. You know, at the thinnest point, the griptilian is a little bit thinner, but if you're looking at this thickest point, the belly here, and you look at just how big that handle is overall, the fact is, when you put this in your pocket, and it doesn't look that much, it doesn't look chunkier, it doesn't look thicker on the table. But the Griptilian just feels like a giant rounded object. It feels like you're carrying a big old river rock in your pocket all the time, mostly because of how thick the knife is right here, right at this, you know, the meat of this belly. This thing feels huge. And sort of to, to finish my comparison with the Hinderer, it is, if anything, it feels the same size as the Hinderer. Frankly, I think it feels a little bit bigger than the Hinderer in the pocket. But the Hinderer is a remarkably more robust knife. It has all that robustness of the Griptilian blade and more with better ergonomic lines with a slightly more secure lock. And it's just a heavier duty knife in general. The Griptilian, you've got something that is just the same size at minimum in your pocket that is simply not as capable a knife as something like a hinder as something like a pm2 something like that this feels like a boat anchor in your pocket i'm more okay dealing with a boat anchor when i'm getting a big chunky knife level of utility about it but honestly this feels not that different from carrying an ad20s this feels not that different from carrying even like a Project X or something like that. It feels about that level of big in my pocket. And it's just not as capable as those other big knives. So if I look at how heavy this is to carry, how burdensome this is to carry, relative to the level of performance that I'm actually getting, it's it's worse than the vast majority of things on the market right now. Um, and it really is one of the reasons that this knife feels dated in particular. And it's part of the reason that I have not carried this knife more than I have, even as I've been going to review it. Because I don't want to carry it because it's just so darn big in the pocket. I just don't like carrying this around, especially when... I often feel like I still need another knife in case I want to do, you know, in case I have to, you know, split a carpet in half or take down a bunch of cardboard or even do more aggressive tasks in the garden. This Griptilian handle just isn't going to cut it, so it can't even be like my go-to heavy-duty knife for the day sometimes. There are lots of people that have beaten the sun out of their Griptilian that would disagree with me, and frankly, if you're used to carrying large knives, then none of what I said you know, matters if your baseline is an XM18 and you're the sort of person that carries an 18 or a 24, or you're the sort of person that tends to carry a Strider or something like that. This is in the same realm as that, so you'll be fine. And frankly, you look at a lot of the dirtied up Gratillions over the years, and those were probably the sorts of people carrying them. But I feel like this is a blade that's meant for a much smaller knife than it is, and so it feels like I'm carrying around a lot of unnecessary weight and unnecessary bulk. And then value, this was 175 back when it came out. Frankly, if you took this same thing out with how Benchmade's inflated their prices, this would probably be like 225 today. Especially with the little bit of play you get in there. And again, the sort of 
decent, but in, in no way impressive level of fit and finish here. It's a nicely milled G10 handle, but it's a full G10 handle with a frankly decent design, but not a great design anymore. It was great when it came out, but it's just decent now. The, the Anything around 200 bucks for this feels a little expensive. And I feel like even more than most Benchmades, if you took the Benchmade logo off of this knife and you saw this knife come out today in something in a configuration very, very similar to this, frankly, you would look at this design and you would think it was more likely to be a Civivi knife than a Wii knife, just to sort of put it on a tier ranking. This is a knife design-wise that feels suited to that, like, $150 range, which, granted, is where the Griptilian was for a lot of its life. But knives were all cheaper back then in general. Um, this design feels dated and paying what you would paying even $175 even ignoring inflation even paying $175 for this knife in 2024 would feel quite expensive that's a function of course of the fact that knives have just gotten better over the years since this came out but you have to honestly account for that in recommending whether this is a good value and it just this feels like what you expect from a budget knife company or a budget knife these days, and it would not be priced at a budget level if it came back out. So it doesn't feel like a value. And so honestly, overall, this is a B minus knife. As you've seen, there are some classic knives that I truly feel are classics for a reason and that hold up extraordinarily well today. I love the Benchmade 940. I think the Benchmade 940 still has a lot of value, and I think that a lot of its design doesn't feel dated at all. It feels extremely modern, in fact, and it still does things and is satisfying in ways that nothing else in the industry really is. Um, the Sabenza, whenever I get around to reviewing it, the Sabenza is in competition for being my single favorite knife, and this design has not changed materially in probably 30 years. Now, it probably hasn't changed materially in, like, 15 to 20 years. The Griptilian, when you start to really look closely at it, you can understand why Benchmade discontinued this model. Even with all the history, even with all the people that love and have loved the Griptilian, the fact is this is just not a great knife by modern standards. It was probably a great knife back when it came out. Um, Knives were less ergonomic back then. They were less interesting back then. They were cheaper back then. Um, the axis lock was more interesting. Blade grinds were generally less impressive back then. But the fact is, this just feels like a dated, overly simplistic design, especially in the handle. I actually don't have much issue with the blade on the Griptilia. I think that this is a really nice rendition of the draw point. It's very functional. It's as good looking as it needs to be. And it's just... it's very nice to use but i do not like this handle all that much i don't think it's actually that grippy it's huge it's chunky it's heavy it throws the balance of the knife off um, it isn't finished at the level that you might want and it just ends up feeling compromised so I wasn't all that positive on the full-size RSK either. I think that one felt like a bit of a boat anchor as well. But that one at least felt tougher than this knife does. Um, so I could see the justification for having that one. This one, frankly, unless you're a Benchmade collector, I don't see a lot of reason to have a Griptilian when there are so many other good options out there. Um, and... It's reflecting the fact that, frankly, this is a knife that I just haven't wanted to carry since I've gotten it, even as I prepared for this re review. I got it for the sake of wanting to get a review out for the channel of a classic design like this, and now that I've done the review, it is going to be going on to a new home, because it's just not a knife that, frankly, I would choose to carry over the myriad other options I've got. So... 39 minutes in, hope you found that helpful or at least entertaining. I hope you found it to be a good use of your time. This has been Clark the Knife. Um, like and subscribe if you got some value here. Let me know what other knives you might like me to look at, and I'll do my best to try to track them down for you. Um, I do purchase everything on this channel myself and then sell it again on the secondary market. 
So I can't guarantee I'll be able to get my hands on everything, but at least you know that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So again, hope you found this was a good use of your 40 minutes or however long you did listen for. And I'll see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.